Thank you, everyone. We're going to start with county tonight, so I'll turn it over to Tobias. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Announcements. This meeting is being video and audio recorded. Public comment. Uh, we can take that under the selectmen. Um, new business. I'm not aware of any members. We have the approval of minutes, warrants, and pending contracts. I'll take that as an approval. Approval of payroll and treasury warrants. No objection, so those will be approved. And the official business is to adopt the 2017 county budget. Um, Mr. Chairman, we're going to have the finance director take us through the budget. Oh, excellent. Brian. I, I, do I sense that was said with a certain amount of relief because it's always a little convoluted? It's a little convoluted, but if he can beat my record of five minutes ex explanation. Now he's got a challenge. All right, good. All right. <laughs> Good evening. Thank you very much. Uh, so we're here to uh, present the county budget and hopefully have it adopted tonight. <clears throat> so within the county are the two functions, our county administration um, and operation of the Registry of Deeds. <clears throat> the revenue sources within the county come from the town assessment, deeds excise revenue, the recording fees, uh, the correction deeds excise, which is a $250,000 contribution for the public safety facility. Uh, there's ability to use, if necessary, registry of deeds uh, excise fund balance and uh, county fund balance. We have projected revenue <coughs> using these various revenue sources. Uh, the town assessment to stay the same at the $170,201. Deeds excise re receipts in the amount of $371,875 broken down between county administration. Oh, that's okay. I was trying to get to five minutes. Hopefully I will. <laughs> it's uh, Eric's up now. Yeah, Eric is <laughs> taking sides on this. <laughs> uh, broken down between county administration of $223,000 and registry of deeds in the amount of 148. Recording fees have been estimated at 1715 dollars the 250000 that I had mentioned from the corrections deeds excise. We're proposing to use uh, 32815 from the registry of deeds fund balance, and we would propose to use 250000 from the county fund balance for total projected revenue of $1.246 million. Did you mention the prior slide, but how, what are the fund balances right now? Uh, the county fund balance right now is approximately 1.26, I believe it is, and the deeds excise is in excess of um, just around $2 million. So there. they do have the capacity to uh, cover, this, cover the proposal. <clears throat> Next slide. Sorry. Okay, this is probably where I'm going to get a little muddled up, but um, there's what's known as the maintenance of effort or the county funding requirement. Um, by law, the county must provide a certain amount of non-deeds excise revenue to the registry. It does increase annually by 2.5%. This year's funding requirement is 305862 of which the 170000 does make up um, the non-deeds excise revenue. The projected expenses for the year, uh, county administration is $508,964. Registry of deeds is $487,000. As I had mentioned, the public safety debt facility or public safety facility debt service is $250,000, which balances the budget at $1.246 million. So what we have here is uh, essentially a comparison for um, 17 budget, which I just walked through to what was actually uh, adopted at last last year uh, by the county commissioners. So there's an increase of about 200 and a little over 250 thousand dollars, or actually a little slightly more than that, 300 thousand. So. And the, in, the increase yep. is all in county administration. It correct? is, correct. yes, that's correct. But then primarily, the majority of the increase is all funded in the county administration line. And, and the increase is, um, as you can see, s about $250,000, and that is anticipation of some additional legal fees for some potential takings. Okay. And Libby, is there any more in professional services there? Is that... Is that what that might have been where to? we put 
Uh, no, the, the increase is primarily driven in the legal the okay. legal line. Yes. Any other questions, board members? Right. No, the only one on the legal line that's um, sort of anticipatory or possible. Correct. That's correct. Thank you. Motion to approve the budget. Do I have a second? Second. Yes. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimously approved. Um, commissioners, reports, and comments. Thank you. We'll take those under the BOS and we'll take a motion, motion to, to adjourn. adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. DaCosta. Thank you. I'm going to open the uh, January 27th, 2016 Board of Selectmen meeting. Call the meeting to order. Uh, accept the acceptance of the agenda. There are no changes. The agenda is accepted as written. Announcements. The Board of Selectmen meeting is being audio and videotaped, recorded. Public comments. Does anyone have anything for public comment that is not on our agenda tonight? Seeing none, we'll move on to new business. We have no new business tonight. Uh, we have the approval of the payroll warrant for the week ending January 24, 2016. Seeing no objections, that is approved. The approval of the treasury warrants for January 27, 2016. Seeing no objections, those are approved. And the approval of the pending contracts for January 27th is set forth on the spreadsheet identified as Exhibit 1. Libby? We just have two. One is a license agreement, actually, for Board of Selectmen Town Administration with Nantucket Community Sailing. They pay us $1 for the use of Pulpus Harbor, town-owned property at Pulpus Harbor in the adjacent area for their recreational facility, and it's a one-year license. And the director is here if you have any questions about it. Just are there any changes from the prior lease? Um, I don't think so, no. Just the dates. Secondly, we have a professional services agreement for town administration with Titan Energy. We, we aren't specifically paying for this. This is the firm that brokers our um, competitive purchase for electric rates, and we're about to have them start doing that. Yeah, I talked to Lauren about it. It's kind of like a, a precursor to laying out the actual RFP for the CCA, and they're just we're taking on their professional services to a further extent. Oh, sorry, that's right. It, that wasn't exactly what I said at all. This, this it's is okay. This is for the community aggregate? Yeah. Right. They're going to issue an RFP for us to see who would be able to um, manage it, basically, but it doesn't commit us to anything. It basically gets us to see how such a program could work for us. And then if the town meeting warrant article passes we and we like the whole program, then we could proceed with a subsequent RFP for the actual service. And presumably they get compensated someplace down the road somehow. Yeah. For down the road their efforts somehow. Are. They, they, they take their, their, their risks as a broker, you know, so if, if it, the program doesn't work out, you know, it's at their loss. If it works out, you know, they, they get a little cut. They get a percentage of the yeah. business, yeah. But there's, you know, there's definitely some questions to be um, answered through the process, and you know, I think there's questions as far as structure and you know those savings. Do we turn them directly back to the ratepayer, or do we use them for right. to fund more renewables? There's other questions. There are all those questions, but just to understand their relationship. Um, so, are they have they already been chosen as the broker, or they compete like? As I assume this is a broker for the purchase of the power. We, we did an RFP, yep. and I think there were five or so respondents. We had a small group um, that, who reviewed the responses, and this was the successful right. response. So they have been selected. Yes. Yeah, okay. And this, so they have, an, in effect, they have an exclusive under that RFP process as the broker of record, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I hope I'm saying that. Uh, yeah. right. I, I understood it a little differently, Rick. I understood it as they were being hired to help us through the the process of hiring a broker. Right. Okay, well, that's a little different. I, I, I don't mean to be sort of too detailed here, but if they're being paid to work through the process of hiring a broker, that's one thing. If they're doing that voluntarily and then they're, there's a selection process and they're at risk in that selection process. That's yeah. that's sort of not what I heard Libby say. I thought I heard her say there had already been a selection process. A but selection. maybe that's for a different there, role. There was, there was a um, selection process for um, selecting Titan. 
to be the broker for the town's purchase of energy right now? Uh, um, no. no. For, for, that's all right. For the that, community aggregate, if it's adopted and so on, they will be the broker of record representing the community aggregate? Um, no. This is sort of pre the community aggregate. I m okay. mistakenly that's used right. uh, the word of uh, some I think words. this company is going to help us get there. That's yeah. all right. The, I'm right. getting too detailed. It's okay. It, it's, um, <laughs> there, there are com it's a complex um, set, of, set of numbers and that you need to understand to launch these programs, and I think you know, you know, Lauren and George do a great job. But it's helpful to have another entity involved in that process. I think Rick, they are interested potentially in being, you know, running the CCA, you know, mm -hmm. being the broker. Okay. But I would, you know, there are a number of other good firms out there who might do a better job, depending on what we want as a community. And so going through the process, I think, will help us better understand what we really want to do with the program. Okay. So that's still an open issue down the road. And there is no cost for this. No cost. Correct. So they're doing it, pro, I guess, Rick, like you said, pro bono to hope, hopefully get to be the one selected. But they're at risk. So. Yeah. Just like understand All right. that. Those questions are answered. If there are no objections, these two contracts will be approved. Seeing none, thank you. Okay, we're going to move on to citizens and departmental requests. The first is a request from the Sharbon Shellfish, the Harbor and Shellfish Advisory Board requests the selectmen schedule a public hearing to amend the Town of Nantucket shellfishing policy and regulations to allow for the free scallop license for retired scallopers over 60 years old. So this is just a formality to schedule a public hearing. So Libby and Erica, let's put the advertisement in and figure out the date and then let the SHAB board know when it's going to be. Yeah, I, th I think it's going to have to be in March because we've already missed the advertising deadlines for February. Okay. So that will happen in March. The next is a request for an approval of a license agreement to allow an encroachment on the front steps for a portion of landing into the town-owned property at 5 Green Lane. Um, you know, this is Mr. Bro Brusher. Good to see you. This is pretty much a formality, though. This is, we've been cleaning these up where we have steps and signs that hang out over town property. So. That's right, Mr. Chairman. For, uh, for the predecessor and title attorney, John Brescher, um, as you can see from the site plan, these, there are steps going into the techni technically the public layout of Green Lane. Even though I, I submitted a picture, um, it's not in the traveled way. Um, regardless, when my client sold the property, the new buyers asked that we get a license in case they decide to make any renovations in the future so that they're not held up with the building process, that they have this license. Um, we sent over the license to town council. Uh, town council reviewed it. We've accepted all their changes. So we're, we're, it's all good on our end. It is notable, too, that Green Lane is a dirt road. It's not a... Very traveled. It's not way. green. Well, it's, <laughs> it's not a real thoroughfare. <laughs> to be honest, it's kind of refreshing to see a few dirt roads and yeah, everything paved in. So, so. Um, move approval. Is there second. a second? All those in favor? All right. Aye. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Number two. Um, planning office request for execution and purchase of a sales Done. agreement. Quick claim deed settlement. Town owned land. Parcels known as Parcel 34, Tom Nevers, uh, Nobody Avenue is shown on the land on, on the plan, land and title, <coughs> land for acquisition. Uh, this is plan number 2011-24. And we do have a recommendation from our newly formed real estate review committee. The real estate uh, real estate assessment committee reviewed this in their 122 meeting, and there was a unanimous vote. For a favorable recommendation, Mr. Chairman, I provided you with a report. Um, just a you know very small parcel. Um, I detailed out in that report um, your usual concerns about it's not able to be subdivided. It adds a very minimal amount of ground cover to the property to the south, and this is part of the cleanup that we've been working on. Um, uh, this particular group was bid in 2011, I believe. Um, because there were some land court issues, uh, that's what sort of caused the delay. But um, again, we've been, we've had some time to get these cleaned up. I think as you directed, and this, um, I'd ask that you move forward with us. Questions, Question? comments? Just just kind of like a general for the whole 
whole group, Andrew, um, you know, because I, I read the information they presented. Did you guys have a chance to like look over kind of bigger pictures where all these are, and you know, they're not? There's no conflicts with as far as like accesses in the future. If you know, Surfside becomes a little downtown area, and we want little roads cutting through. Well, that's that's really the whole point of the program. There's more than adequate roads already in place for the density. There is on the Woodbine. If you looked at those closely, you see we reserved the uh, eight foot path. So, you know, no, where, where we can, we've reserved that. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, here there's really not a need. It's a very short block. But, um, you know, all of these, I think, I hope with the committee, with the report, with all the information, as we get that to you in advance, these can go back on the consent item. You know, I know you've got a lot of other issues before you. And as a group, this is really kind of a, you know, not a real important group. Yeah. So. Um, and just my, my one other question, I just had a, an email from someone, you know, just making sure we get that language in regarding the 40B, you know, that these parcels must be consistent with existing zoning. It's in there. Just. She's done that on all the ones ever yeah. since you asked, so. Great. Sounds good. Motion but to it, approve. Yeah, but it doesn't address it. If you're reading them online, it doesn't address it like, like I would write it. It's addressed as a lawyer would write it. Right. It doesn't right. say, you know, 40 being highlights well, or anything. I don't think you can specify specific. Exactly. So You have to say within the zoning. Okay. Yeah, Pertinence yeah. of the law. All right. Don, I think you were about to make a motion. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, the next one is a quick claim. Requ uh, request for execution of purchase and sale agreement, quick claim deed. Um, and this is parcel D, Woodbine Street. Assessor's map 1887, uh, plan 2011-10. We also have a unanimous um, favorable, unanimous favorable vote from the Real Estate Review Committee. Questions? Seeing none, I'll obtain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, the next one is execution, purchase, and sale agreement. For a quick claim deed settlement, par this is parcels J1, uh, C1 and J1, Woodbine Street, same map, 1887, same plan, 2011-10. Another, again, uh, re the Real Estate Review Committee looked at this and gave it a unanimous favorable. Uh, Motion. Yeah, before we go to that, that's here. Which, so who's, which lot is purchasing and which is going to be attached to? It's going to be attached to this one right here. Okay. Gotcha. Yep. Bo bo both of them? Yes, both lots together. The the eight-foot path runs between the middle of them. I mean, the, the current path, as you can see, is kind of here on private property, winding all over the place. So it's this is here to make sure that that path, you know, if this property owner ever wants it off, there's a place for it to go. And, it, and then their access is off of Plum to those lots. Correct. Gotcha. Okay, so we're not creating access to a landlocked parcel or anything else. It's gotcha. Good. That's right. Just curious, why would the the party on the left, I gather, is the buyer? Who's the buyer again, Andrew? Here. He's saying that yeah, that one there. Yep. Yeah. And and do they? Um, I mean, usually you think of the uh, adjacent landowner acquiring the property here. Uh, a non-adjacent, I guess he's adjacent by right <laughs> by steps. Um, but but so does he get uh, enough more ground cover to make it of interest or something? They, there, I'm just curious. there is some additional ground cover that comes with this parcel because yeah. this is an area with well and septic. There's also you know if you put the well up here somewhere, you have more separation. Yeah. Um, in this case, you know there are some cases where the abutting owners don't want to any additional land and the owner here chose not to bid yep. and this person uh, I think in a second round of bidding actually put the bid in so um, yeah, just, just curious thanks so there's some there's a good reason for him to do that presumably yes or, or a reason well, well, partly is to keep the path to the, his path well the path too but the path yeah. uh, I don't if it's not for access it, it's for, presumably we're trying to get a path eventually for everybody well, it's, it's already there. It's, just, to it, right? it's a neighborhood path to yeah. the beach. Yeah. Right. right. The path is there for the public. So, 
motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, the next one is um, parcel 1-A Irving Street, um, plan 2012-12. This also got a unanimous approval from the REAC. So it sure looks like a narrow sliver to me. <laughs> yeah. And, and the one thing, there's a well-used path here. That is protected. This is Irving Street. I think you may remember you heard from people who use this. This is a, a path that everybody really likes and uses this. And that is preserved. Um, that little strip goes with the parcel off to the left and cures a, an internal conveyancing error. So, again, it's Motion. very minor. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And the last one is a request for execution of purchase and sale agreement for this is parcel 1 -B, 6B Irving Street, um, plan 2012 22. This is the wider piece. So, is this going to the one on the right, Andrew? One on the right. Yeah. I'll move approval. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Just for the board's notion or reference, um, in the future when we have these and the, the real estate board committee has looked at them, as long as they give them unanimous consent, um, unanimous approval, I'm going to put them on the consent items from this point on so we don't have to go through them. If somebody has one that they want to pull out, all they got to do is let Libby or I know prior to the meeting we'll pull it out yeah, or okay. we'll just ask for the meeting and we'll right exactly and, and I, I like seeing all the maps up front it's a lot easier than thumbing through right and Erica's great at getting those yeah, all done so. okay all right we're going to move on to the public hearing part of tonight's meeting there's a public hearing to consider taking of a portion of the paper streets described below for general municipal purposes and or public access or open space pursuant to mass general law chapter 79 or otherwise we'll wait on the first one is uh, Bosworth Road between a line extending from the northern property line on Assessor's Map 92.4, parcel 114, to the northern side line of Winona Way, a.k.a. Atlantic Boulevard. Dorset Road between the north side line of Winona Way, a.k.a. Atlantic Boulevard, and Atlantic Boulevard, Winona Way, a.k.a. Atlantic Boulevard, Atlantic Ocean, excuse me, between the westerly side lines of Dorset Street, FKA, Frequently called? Formerly known as. Oh, formerly known as. <laughs> Good. I didn't know that one. Eastern Street to the eastern sideline of Joy Road and Joy Road between the southern sideline of Winoma Way, FKA, Atlantic Boulevard, to the Atlantic Ocean, as is authorized by the vote of the Article 97 of the 2014 Annual Town Meeting. And, I know. Do I have to read that on every one of these? No. Can I, no. Can I summarize? I would summarize. Um, Mr. Chairman, we're asking that you um, postpone this particular, or if you're opening the public hearing, and then you would continue this matter to the uh, February meeting. Okay. So Can I'd I request that it go to a later meeting? Because I won't be here. Later is fine. Okay, so we'll go to the March public hearing. Okay, so I have opened the public hearing. Is there anyone who makes comment on this who is here tonight? Come on up. And when we get a chance, could we get, I love the yellow, so I'm not quite sure. I wasn't sure how many, it was difficult. Was it, it di okay. was difficult for me to understand before how many parcels were involved in this. Yeah. So I just, oh, okay, when we get yeah. a chance, that's helpful. <laughs> I'm happy to make my comments at the March meeting. I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to be continued to February also because I won't be here for that. Okay. So if that's fine with you, we'll... That's, that's fine. Could we have you. your name just for the record? I'm Laura McCloskey. Okay, Laura. I'm in a butter in this okay. area. And right. that will actually give um, one of the neighbors who feels that they're being negatively impacted a chance to get themselves here. They're in Florida right now. Okay. So Somewhere. it'll be... the Is it... 23rd. 23rd of March. Sweet. All right. Thank you. Okay. The next one is a triangle parcel of land. Oh, I, I need I'll to make a motion to continue to March 20. The public hearing to March 23rd. March 23rd. Is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Just, just when we get a chance to do the yellow, could you, because there are apparently some issues or concerns, could you shoot that out to us right away? Sure. Thank you. Okay. 
Uh, I'm going to open a public hearing for the triangle parcel of land bounded by Beach Plum Avenue between the eastern sideline of South Shore Road and the western sideline of Assessor's Map 67133. Mr. Chairman, this um, is a small parcel of land. This has been addressed in my report. Beach Plum Avenue is a, a part of this one of the one of the Surfside um, area plan, uh, roads that you know was shown on a plan, never really used. Um, this, uh, this this really clears up a title issue. Um, all of the owners have effectively removed this lot and incorporated it into their land, but there's a process that has to be done to make that work. And so, the taking tonight would um, would allow that next step. Um, what we would propose later is a direct deed of this property to the adjacent owner which uh, would then solve any of their zoning issues with their that particular problem property is it the property on the right Andrew on the right yes okay. uh, this is a public hearing is there anyone in the public who would like to make comment on this Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. And Mr. Chairman, can I just note the, the your real estate um, advisory committee um, reviewed this as well and gave a positive recommendation. And at a later time, there will be a value put on the sale of it? At, at, at disposition stage, yes. Okay. Yep. So I'm just doing the first part of it. Yep. And so moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. The next one is Westchester Street portion extending through Assessor's Map 41, parcel 468, 5 Wanacomet Road. And the triangle portion, northwest corner of Assessor's Map 41, parcel 480, 21 Crooked Lane. Shown on the plan, 2015-52. And again, you can see that, Mr. Chairman, on the map behind you. You can see it's outside of the actual traveled way. This is the dirt section of Westchester between Crooked Lane and Wanna Comet. So this particular corner has no real road infrastructure at all. It's uh, a wooded piece. It eventually will be joined to land to the south that the land bank is intending to acquire. So it would be a parcel that would likely in the future go to the land bank, might make its way into our exchange of properties um, uh, for the school site and maybe some others. So, so the first step is to take it and get on with it. And then at some point we'll have a discussion in the future about yeah. what eventually happens. This is a public hearing. Anyone in the public wish to make comment? You all set, Billy? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. So moved. Motion. The motion has been made by Matt, Second. seconded by Don. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> All right, the next is an unnamed way between a line extending across said way at its intersection with Westchester and Franklin Streets, Butters 4244 and 44R Westchester Street. So, Mr. Chairman, um, this uh, is a, s a small street that was shown on a 1946-47 plan. At some point, the, from what I've uh, been made aware of by the neighbors, they mutually agreed to close this off so there wasn't through traffic through here. Um, this is the first step to acquire this particular piece, uh, and eventually it would go to the property here on the left-hand side. This is not a property that's split down the middle because this particular um, road was laid out of one larger piece. So it's not, um, basically there are entirely different divisions on either side of this. So all of the title of this particular road would go to the property here on the left. And, and Andrew, what about the piece above? Has that already been um, disposed of? Or? It hasn't at this point if the abutters of this northerly piece want their portion done, they would complete the plan at their cost and bring that forward. Probably one other question. The, the rectangular insert, that's, that's the driveway? Yeah. Yes. That's sort of the uh, arrangement they all made at some point past 
Correct. And use the, it that way? There is a, a stockade fence that, you know, if you look at the aerial of this, you see that the, the you know, that's treated as, as part of the lot. Pretty much as, as part of the lot anyway. This, so. is, this is a public hearing. Is anyone in the public wish to make comment? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. Comments, motions from the board? Move you know, this is the you know, taking side, you know, I think there might be some interesting uses. You know, you're kind of connecting through two little cute streets, so might be some in potential for some small easements down the side, but yeah. we'll get to that to, on to the look other at side. The, the taking part is always easier, it seems to me. <laughs> We have a motion to proceed with the taking, seconded by Tobias. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. Okay. But, but here, just on that thought of what you're saying, Toby, and, and you, Rick, saying we can do it later, that what happened, like this gets a, you know, we do this, and if it's brought by the property owner, then they have a certain expectation. If we might have a different one, then we should, then maybe you might want to make that as part of your motion, Toby. If you're thinking you want to, to look as to whether there should be a, you know something else there you should make that known or it may not come up later you already voted though understood well i think we can have a comment i think andrew's heard what we're talking about to make right. sure there's and I'm, i think that fits within what the real estate assessment group was doing and what you're trying to do andrew you're aware of these things i'm just i understand putting it out there i just think that the, it's the disposition when you have that discussion because yeah. you as the selectman have the right to retain any rights in the property before you dispose of it. You don't have to exactly. sell it to them. Exactly. But, but at the same time, if they've approached us, they've approached us under a certain, with their desires, yeah. if we're countering with, if, you know, and maybe this isn't the lot, but if we're doing a lot that we think, geez, this should have, you know, we're doing this road and this needs a bike path or this, need, this should have a walking path. We should. I, I, we what should I'm be saying, paying for the fee. We should, well, as, as soon as we recognize that, mm -hmm. the sooner we put that on the record, so that everyone understands what's happening rather than wait till the end because it could be a different board or it could, it could be one of those things we miss. That's all I'm saying. And, and, and the property owner of interest here is probably spending some money to bring it to this point right, with exactly. those expectations. With their expectations. Right. If ours are different, we, to be fair, we need to put those up well, as I, soon as we can. Can I ask one question? Mm -hmm. If you know, I can't pull it up. Do those what, what's the age of both structures? Do they predate 1955? I I don't know for sure. Okay. Don't know. I'd just be curious to know that. The on Franklin Street definitely does. Okay. The one behind it was substantially rebuilt a few years ago and it replaced an existing structure. Okay. Bobby, is this your parents' old house? Yeah. I was trying to figure out where it was. Yeah. Okay. That's been a driveway yeah. since I was two. I, I can tell. I can tell. <laughs> a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell the board that uh, all the owners that contacted me do not want a through road here. Yeah. So I can and tell there's you. There's no reason. There's to, no reason for a through that's road. That's right, right there. up close to what is it? Whatever that. I didn't. I couldn't figure out where. Yeah, it was. And I and there's. I'm not sure. I don't think there is either. But the point I'm making is a larger point. Yeah. Of getting your. You know, if there's other things, we need to put those up early. Right. Yeah. I just, I just think it's a kind of a you know, cute little area in town where you might connect into the cemetery cemetery, or, you know, the lily ponds on one side, coffin parks on the other side. You know, in the future, it might connect us through neighborhoods and make some really nice walking paths. And I think your, your point's well taken, Matt. Okay. Um, we have a... This next request has been withdrawn, so I don't even need to read it, correct? Yeah, we had a public hearing request for uh, from Blackwell and Associates for adoption of a structure, 33 Matic Road, in connection with the force main, individual force mains, but it's been withdrawn, so we're all set on that one. Uh, that takes care of our public hearing section. I'm going to turn it over to Libby for the town manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First, we have a review of a draft memorandum of understanding between the board and the airport commission regarding the payment of, repayment of town subsidies to the airport for certain fiscal years, and uh, finance director is gonna go over it with you and review some issues that came up at finance committee earlier this week, because we had forwarded it to them to take a look at. Thank you. Um, good evening again. So the last time we had come before you, we had presented a draft, and um, we had asked, been asked to rework it, so we went back to the drawing board, and the airport manager and I uh, came up with hopefully what an, ag an agreement that you will 
be happy with. I will note the airport commission at a meeting I think last week is it Tom uh, act two weeks ago actually did approve the the agreement. Um, so I will take you through it. Uh, you can go to page two. So the key points. Uh, sorry, we're done already. <laughs> So the key points really uh, the last time where we were trying to come up with a way to allow the airport to pay money back sooner and using retained earnings and the it was our understanding that you would like it as simple as possible to to uh, reach the end result which is ultimate payback of the money. So in the fiscal 2016 budget the airport has budgeted 135,000. We then have budgeted in every each subsequent year it's actually there is a this has changed a little bit but it's a payment it should be two hundred and thirty five thousand six hundred and twenty dollars annually um, which would get us after a 20-year payback to zero one of the things that has happened is that in the DPW director in discussion with the airport manager has identified um, some asphalt grindings that from a project that the airport is undertaking that we potentially the DPW could use so this was drafted in consultation with um, our attorneys to allow the airport to um, to us to use that as an in-kind service, which we would value um, based on fair market value as determined in con consultation with the Board of Selectmen and the Airport Commission. It was originally intended in whatever year that those uh, we used any of that as an in-kind service, that it would be reduced in that year. And the intent is not to reduce payments in the future year. It only reduces the balance so that ultimately, if we use in-kind services and payment, the town receives through in-kind services or payment the full $4.6 million back. At the FinCom meeting on Monday night when they reviewed the agreement, they made a recommendation that the agreement be changed to uh, state that if there's any in-kind services used in any particular year, let's use an example as fiscal 2017, that the value of those in-kind services be put at the end of the contract to re to reduce the end year so that the airport was still paying the 235, it's like 235 mm -hmm. every year until that point. Um, so that is one of the one of the recom that's a recommendation that they made to actually reduce the last year's payments first and then we would still be getting money in the subsequent payments till we reach those years um, I will note if that's something that the board wants to entertain then we would actually have to go back and redo revisit this with the airport commission to see if that's something they are interested in considering or then we'd be back to square one if they're not right. well, <coughs> when I was listening to you I thought you described the agreement as quite similar to the finance committee request but maybe I misunderstood you no what we had envisioned when we drafted it was in fis if we if the DPW used the grindings in 200 to fiscal 217 excuse me mm -hmm. that that would be offset against the two hundred thirty five thousand oh, dollar payment that in, in that year oh, okay. the I finance committee has that. recommended that it be offset in the last years of the contract first working backwards so collecting cash every year up until that point <clears throat> so that's a lot of paperwork to keep track of for 20 years I mean we're gonna have to pay for the grindings one way or another yeah. if we don't get it in like kind then we got to it's got to come out of budget so to me it's Really doesn't yeah, yeah, make much I, difference. And well, but it, it, it well, you can go tell me. I, I, I just want to know what we use grindings for specifically. Hard pack. I think the DPW director would be Is better that like to answer that pack? question than I am. Well, I, th I think it's important, though. Base you know, base road yeah, base. for it's mainly just mainly for road base. That would be what you're using us for. Yes, we've actually uh, graded uh, Lovers Lane with it, and it has really, really good characteristics. So we were actually looking forward to being able to use that to stabilize roads that well, we don't, don't say really, have really good. They'll, they'll raise the price. Yeah, but <laughs> uh, it's, so, so, but but it's important to understand though is that you know, we're taking some you know ground up asphalt and oil, and then we're putting it down Lovers Lane as like a hard packed surface. You know, and the wellhead's right there, and it's got oil in it. I'm just. Well, something I think about. I know? did want to mention that the price that we utilize to develop the uh, the total cost is a bid price that we have from one of our vendors for the exact same item. Yeah, so they're putting that item on anyway, Toby. It's not. It's approved by the DEP. 
It's not just something that we just decided we're going to use. No, I, I think that's a question worth looking into. I'd rather look it into it as part of our overall policy unrelated to this, if that makes sense to you, Tobias. That, that, that does, yeah. Okay. I, it, so well, I, I don't think I have a problem whether, you know, if, if, if you've already done it and it's paid during that year or offsets the cash, I don't really mind that going that direction, but, yeah. you know. I hear what the finance yeah. committee was talking about. You know, yeah. no, I think collect the cash yeah. when you can get it. I guess. Well, I think the other reason is that this is an if, if you read this, this is an interest-free loan. So we're, you know, for twenty years, there's a value of money, and if we're getting, you know, it's sort of. So I can see where they're trying to offset the end, and get as much early as you can and offset the end because you're giving a break to the airport by not charging them anything. We're losing money by not charging them. Is what you meant? I, I'm yeah. not sure that's related, but it could be. Well, mean, it could it, be. Well, Jim, Jim can answer. I guess he's here to Jim. speak. Uh, Jim Kelly from the Finance Committee. The uh, first of all, we really applaud the concept of the in-kind services uh, with DPW and the airport working together. We're trying to figure out a way to um, recognize the fair market value of that. Um, also, the feeling we talked about putting a collar around it. For example, in-kind services couldn't be more than 50% of the payment that year. Uh, that was complicated. Uh, we want to encourage the concept of in-kind services, but we also want to make sure that it's reflected in the the, the, uh, the offset is reflected in the in that department's budget over time. And we felt that adding it to the end uh, was a a way to get the payment because we. When we took our motion to recommend uh, this, we said the monies would be paid back. Uh, many of us thought that was a cash payment, although it wasn't clear. And this was a way to encourage in-kind services, but to recognize that cash would be coming on the front end. Jim, just, just to be clear, if, if it's clear that uh, the DPW is going to spend the same amount of money under, that, under their contract to buy this kind of fill, Right. Uh, we're really even up, and so it's more. I mean, it's a bit of optics, it seems to me. Uh, well, it's, it uh, we want to encourage the managers to look at identify in-kind services, but also in-kind services that they would use in their budget, and not just have the advantage of that being available to to use so the, the the filings or whatever will be uh, will be uh, developed again in the next two or three years. Uh, so this is just not a one-time thing. Yeah, but I mean, as they redo runways, they might have a lot of right, those. right, right. Um, so that was our that was our thought. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And if and, and we can exchange it for in-kind service if if we need it. Yeah, I, I suppose if they if the airport doesn't use it themselves, they're going to sell yeah. it, and they're going to sell it probably at a different price than we're going to buy at. So I mean, this gets a little convoluted. Yeah, they'll sell it to Victor, turn it back in asphalt, and we'll buy it when we pay pave yeah. the new roads. Anyway, I, I don't have strong feelings one way or another, Bobby. You know, Brian, you want to continue, or was we stuck on this point here? We need you need a decision from us on what we want to do here. Right. Yeah, I mean, there's a recommendation. If you want to take the recommendation of the finding, then I'm going to have to sit down with Tom and go back to the airport because they have approved it. Um, at the, it's actually the payment is two hundred thirty-five thousand six hundred twenty dollars and eighty-seven cents annually for the next nineteen years. Um, if you don't, then provided you're okay with me making the change at the, from that, that payment, then I would ask that you endorse it because um, we do have to still determine whether we need FAA or aeronautics or DOR's approval on doing all of this as well. So, Kara, could you come back up for a minute? i got a couple questions. So when you buy this product now, it has to be tested before you buy it and approved for road hardening. Yes, correct? it meets the dense graded. If we bought it directly from the airport, would the same test be taken care of? Um, no. Well, we didn't. We All didn't right. So let's test. just let's just strike this in kind language out of here, and you, the airport can pay us, and they can sell it to whoever, and we can buy the stuff because I don't want to. I think there's too many variables here that will screw this up. At least that's my thought. Is that, you know, when we buy it from whoever it comes from, Victor. Victor. He has to test it and make sure that there's nothing leaching in it. There's no contaminants in it. It's approved to use for this material. We don't know that we're going to get the same thing from the airport. We're assuming it is. Well, it's asphalt grindings. Yeah, but we don't know what's on it. You know, 
jet it, fuel. Jet, into yeah, it, exactly. Who knows? I mean, Victor. If if we get it from Victor and there's something wrong with it, we have somebody to go after. Well, he sold us a product. He's going to buy it from the airport and then sell it to us. Well, yeah, but it's a clean. Then, I mean, but he's he's have. responsible at that point, is what I'm saying. If we get it from him and there's something we find, you know, Which wrong is, with it, then we're going to go after Victor because he certified that it was clean. If we get it directly from the airport, they're not going to certify it's clean. What does it entail to certify it? Does anyone know? It's lab testing. How how um, is it expensive? Is it something we do in house? So we we wouldn't do it in house, but we no, could send. We would send it out. We'd send it and test it. Mm -hmm. What are we talking cost to test it? it it's fifty bucks or yeah. something. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah less it's, less than hundred. Yeah. Okay. But he the, the I get what, what what Rick said makes a very important point because we're going to pay the airport for it what we would pay Victor but the airport's not selling it to Victor for what would the airport selling it to us for yeah Victor's picking it's up it's not costing spec. us any more money but the airport's making money on it and yeah. they're not testing it so if they want to <laughs> test it and then sell it to us for that price then they can sell it to us direct and we can buy it they can go into the into the hard pack business and say we've got x amount of it here are you interested <laughs> in buying it yeah. probably I mean, Let's, I like what you said. Let's just cut it out of there and I, move on. You know, I mean, just keeps it simple. It, I, I get what we're trying to do, but the FinCom doesn't like it. So then we'd have to go back to the. I just I don't know. I think it's too complicated, and I worry about. I mean, all you got to do is look what's going on in Flint, and realize <laughs> that it sounds like it's a great idea, and then it, it turns into a nightmare. Course, so then, then you'd ask why we weren't going to test it in the first place, right? You know, at least this way, if we test it and we find out it's bad, we have a recourse to go after someone who sold it to us that's supposedly supposed to be testing it before he sells it to us. If we get it directly from the airport, and w then it's going to be on us that we didn't test it. And I don't think you want to get into the testing business and have to go test this stuff before you put it down. So, But then, but then the question is, what is the spread on this? I mean, I like, I, I think, I, it sounds to me like the FinCom liked the idea of doing this. It's, it's using a product we're going to use anyway. And it, I think their goal was to get, you know, more of the payment more quickly. If you take it off the back end, you're still getting your two thirty something a year, and you're 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 getting the back. You're ending you're ending it earlier, and I think that's the whole goal. So well, I, you it, know, I, I hear you, Matt, but I think I, I think it's going to be nickels and dimes at the end of huh. the day. Tom's got his hand up again. Tom, yeah, please. We're not trying to make money on this. In fact, I wish I could just give it to you. Um, <laughs> just because of our grant assurances, we have to have sh some value. If you want to come up with a, a formula that I can have proof and everything else, I don't think you should be charged for the same price because it's already on the island. So if Victor or somebody's charging you for something that has shipping, that should come out, first of all. If you want to take out the, uh, the testing or whatever, I, we're, like I said, we're not looking to try to make money on this. As long as I have a document that says, Here's what the value is we had to pay. You know, I'm just trying to. So, so you don't anticipate any use yourself for this? We stuff? will have a surplus over the next several years. So, so would you mind testing it yourself? Sort of at Bobby's point, and then you sell it to us after it's been I, tested. I, I, if, I don't know what's involved, but yeah, it's fine by me. I don't care. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, if. There's a third option here. I hate to make this draw this out, but if if we pay, I don't know, I'm throwing numbers out here, fifty dollars a ton for it when we buy it from Victor, but they only sell it to Victor for thirty, then it's worth it for us to buy it at thirty. You're getting your value. We're getting it at a lesser rate, and then we'll test it ourselves because it's not going to cost twenty dollars a ton to test it. That's my. That was the point I'm making. Right. Is we can we can say, but if we're paying the exact same price for it that we can get it from Victor for already tested, then it's no there's no advantage for us to go through the stockpiling exactly. it and testing. It. So that's sort of the spread I was talking. Yeah, that's about. that. Yeah. That was my point. Is why why don't we benefit? From, why isn't the town benefit? Is you know in a, as much as we can from the spread. So, so you know, in a safe way. My sense, Bobby, is that we, we've uh, spent some time on this. I think uh, Tom and. Uh, the finance director can sort of work out a way to structure something that meets a lot of these objectives. Right. And if it takes another month, is it that big a deal? No. I don't think so. Yeah. Then we sort of get it right. And if we're yeah. getting that benefit, I don't know if I, I 
I'm just as happy taking it out year to year. Right. You know, if we're not getting the benefit, then I would rather have it chopped off the end and shorten this thing and be done with it. But and then maybe, Kara, in the meantime, you can find out what's involved in the testing and what the cost is for that, because it might, you know, if it's, if it's like soil sampling, you take so much, so many tests every, so, for so many yards, and you send it out, send and it they out. test it for everything in the world, and they get, you get back a report. So. Does that make sense, Brian? It does. So we'll figure out where exactly to put this little additional piece in, and then we'll come back to you for approval once we have that language added to it. Does that? Okay. That's okay. fine. Okay. And I'll work with Tom on getting that straight now. Okay. Thank you. Did, Mr. Kelly, does that sort of appease? Good. All right. So everybody's in agreement on that. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. The next item is, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Libby, I'm taking your, taking your okay. job. <laughs> Back to just, you, Libby. Just, just, just keep going. Uh, we've got the airport fiscal 17 budget, and I don't know if, are you ready for it? Uh, yes, you, you you probably have in your packet the approved the, the budget that was approved by the airport commission. But subsequent to the approval, um, Island Air announced their departure on December 11th. I have a draft revised budget, but our commission has not seen it yet. I'll be glad to go over those numbers. With Why don't you budget. just come back, Tom, after they've seen it? I'd, I'd rather have them That's go fine. over it with you before we go over it. So I apologize, but uh, no, we understand. I, I'll I'll say this though. That's a little bit of setback, but there's been other very good news in between time as well. Some additional JetBlue service, some American service, upgaging aircraft, new city, that type of thing. So Great. W would you be ready by next week? Uh, our next commission meeting is February 9th, I believe. Okay. So we're, we're, we're out in February. Do it the 10th March. or whatever. Okay. What, 10th what? workshop, right? Yep. So we'd have to do it the 17th. 17th. Yeah, we've got, we're shaping up to have a number of public hearings on the 17th. So maybe the 24th? Whatever your pleasure. That's fine. Thank you. Okay. Um, water Company. Bob. Bob. Mr. Gardner, how are you, sir? I'm fine. Yourself? Great. I'm doing fabulous. Thank you. Where are we going to show? The only problem is the water is on the We doing Water Comet or Sconset first? Which one is it? Water Comet. Water Comet, I guess. Um, just a quick review of FY16. Um, we, we started some important projects and finished some important projects um, by the, will be done by the end of this fiscal year. Most importantly is the... Um, retirement of 79 shallow wells at Wires Valley. In fact, on Saturday, they drilled from 8 in the morning till 4.30 that afternoon. Those guys are tough, those drillers. And, and they finished today two replacement wells, and um, they'll be back in a couple weeks to put pumps in, do pump tests, let the bid for the electrical and pipe would do the piping ourselves probably so that's a big huge plus to get rid of that 1914 system finally we'll have to get through the summer with it um a little bit but that's okay um our fire hydrant modernization program went out to bid and started whereby every fire hydrant over 40 years old gets replaced that's about 70 fire hydrants next year Hydrants between 30 and 40 get replaced, and then 20 and 30, and then each year, as a, as you hit 20 years old, you you go to the scrap heap. Um, a huge upgrade to the utility building customer service software uh, happened, and um, we developed uh, the consolidation plan for Nantucket and Sconset Water Commissions. So we. We that's done. That's going to be a town meeting article. Um, it's not really a consolidation. It's Sconset goes away and everything goes into the Nantucket Water Commission, and the commission increases from three to five people. Um, we complete our ten-year capital program, um, and more importantly, the fiber optic went into one milestone road, both for the existing building and our planned new building. So. 16's been busy. It continued to be busy. Okay. Um, 17. 
We're going to bring the Wires Valley wells online. Uh, we're undergoing right now an organizational review. Um, we'll do the phase two. Begin construction of the new administration building. We're hoping that will be in November uh, of this year. Uh, met today with the town's um, OPM and the procurement officer, and we've got a game plan. Um, we're going to complete our Water Management Act permit, and that's that's probably the most significant thing that Wanacommon is going to deal with for the next 21 years. It's a 21-year permit, and that permit quickly um, tells us, dictates to us, what each source can pump on an annual basis. If you exceed that, then there's a lot of paperwork and a lot of a lot of questions and and so we've been working on this now for about eight months to get this through um, DEP. We're close to that and it's going to have a significant impact on not only withdrawal rates but operations. Rates, conservation, public education, source protection, um, significant it's it's a huge permit. Bobby, just a question, Bob, on that. Um, what's the sort of primary issue? I mean, is it to sort of balance input to the aquifer with output, or what's the issue about how much you can draw? Um, well, the regulation is one size fits all, and that's part of the issue. They they. They recognize that there are two sections of the aquifer, but the real driver is population. And we argue it's the most convoluted system. The Department of Conservation and Recreation sets the population number for Nantucket and the water withdrawal forecast, which they give to DEP. DEP takes that, puts all kinds of caveats on it, and puts it into the permit. So. We, you know, after about seven months of beating your head against the wall arguing about population, you just finally give up. You just, okay. Um, the population number that is being used on this permit, oh, it's 12,200 12, for our service area year round and 28,000 seasonally. And, and, and those numbers stay around for 21 years, or do they grow a little bit every year? Um, every five <laughs> years they're reviewed. And, but for those 21 years, it, it amounts to about a 2% increase per year of your withdrawal rate. But every five years, you go back to DCR, or you, if you can, and ask them the whole seasonality aspect um, um, has finally given DP to say, okay, Nantucket, Martha's Vineyard, and the Cape, we can't go by gallons per person per day. We give up. You know, they just, you can't put a number on that seasonal uh, population. So we're exempt from that regulation. The rest of the state is around 80 gallons per person per day. We're at 112. Be you know, that's just the way it is in the summer. Yeah, so, a lot more than 28,000 people here in the summer. Yeah. So, um, a few more. That's why the numbers might be a little. Yeah. yeah. That's and, why and, the 112 yeah. isn't really 112 because. And it's our service like area has increased substantially. You know, there's not much large population areas of the island left that we don't service now. So, it's it's huge, and, and um, but I would. Give a plug for Governor Baker because he made DEP recognize that they had to put a financial impact number on regulations. You just can't pass a regulation onto a water utility and don't care what it costs them. So that was that's a huge plus. Um, our uh, our significant changes uh, certainly our debt service um, uh, meter. Water rate, the service charge, and connection fees are all going to be increased March 1st of this year. Um, I gave the commission my retirement date, which is April 21st, 2017, and um, the commission is starting, and, and staff, we're all working on a, um, a succession plan and, and exactly where we're, where we're all going with that. But um, so the... 
the two things in the future that the next manager will get to work on are certainly the regulatory requirements and um, our future water demand projections and source management. We have a very extensive and complicated hydro hydraulic model of the aquifer, but the growth rate is nothing what we we never anticipated the kind of increase in water demand that we're seeing in the last three or four years. So we're going to take another look and run the model again. Bob, when you when you say you never imagined that, what does that what does that translate to in reality? In the sense that you're getting a permit now, but what what exactly do you mean by that? I'm not sure I understand your question. You're, you're you know you're saying that. If I'm hearing you right, you're saying that we're we're using a lot more water than we ever imagined we would, and what are the ramifications of that? I'm saying that the water demand is greater than we anticipated and projected, trying to project out 10 years, but we certainly have the capacity. Um, I think the capacity issues are going to come. You're going to reach a point where the pipes only hold so much, you know, and that's about five and a half million gallons a day. We're at 4.2 million gallons a day. So there are some things that we're going to be working on for demand side. How do we get a better handle on irrigation? The state is, that's, I know that's in the permit as a mandate. You will take a look at your irrigation water and you will tell us how you're going to control it. People want an irrigation so, um, you know, there, there are those kinds of issues. We want to take a look again at, at uh, source protection with those kind of demands. And it, it's, you know, we only got one one shot at this. Yeah. So We've added a lot of areas, though. You've added Matica, yeah. you've added Hummock Pond. So well, it's, there aren't many areas left that you need to add. Yeah. So you're probably pretty well maxed out now. Uh, exactly. They, the, yeah, Matica is... Uh, more and more people are connecting in and Yeah, Mr. Gardner, what's kind of the curve when you when you say you know we're at 4.2 million gallons a day? You know, I'm imagining yeah. that's in the summer, yeah. obviously. You know, was that was that you know, two million ten years ago, or you know, how has that progressed? Oh, ten years ago, we got we jumped right up and down when we went over two million gallons. That was a that was a huge milestone, but the. The impact of weather on water demand cannot be underestimated. This this year, we pumped 663 million gallons in a calendar year. That's the most in a calendar year, but that's not that's not a fiscal year record. We figure our water revenues on a rolling four-year average because 2012 was we pumped more water than 2013 and 2014. And almost as much as as 2015, so it's a calendar year record. The weather makes a huge difference. You get a very wet summer, you're not going to pump four million gallons a day, just not. So you have There's to. That's a, why we use four years. No, I, I appreciate that. I'm just trying to get a sense. You know, you said you know maxing out at 5.1. Does that mean five years we need to start seeing those reductions, or just kind of wanted to get a sense of where we're at? So there are ways that you can mitigate that if you have to. Yep. Well, but also might, it may be when we start to do some of the dense housing, it might be one of the things that we think about when we're, when we're making those comments because some of these areas are yep. going to pick up quite a lot of people and it's going to use quite a lot of water. And, you know, we're, we're talking 300 units here and 100 units there, 200 units here. It, it's it's going to go fast. That's right. That's exactly right. The joke in the office was no more subdivisions. Well... You know, it's like the death by a thousand small yeah. cuts. You, you five here, four there, fifty. Yeah, and you and you might we may want to identify where that density is going to be placed and make sure that we're requiring large enough pipes servicing those areas. I mean, that's the. You know, that's something we've talked about. So we definitely we have, but it's you know, but it's yeah. this is so we've talked about it in sewer quite a bit, and we've gotten better. I'm sure, at it. the water commissioners talk about this at much more greater length than we do. We do, but then it needs to go from it needs to go from them to to make right. sure that they comment when they need to comment at the ZBA or at the planning board and comment to us if we're doing things. It just 
It's got to be con everyone's right. got to be connected. We need to work closer with those other groups. There's no question about that. It's because um, otherwise we'll yeah. wake up one day with a surprise, yeah. and then it'll it'll be all in the taxpayers. That oh my God, we wish we had thought of that. Well said, Matt. That's all I'm sort of. My only other question before we get, I know we're getting out of this part of it. When you do the, and I'm surprised Toby didn't ask this, but your new administration building, will that be uh, to lead standards or energy efficient, or how will you look at that? Um, we look at the administration building as, um, right now our building's about 5,000 square feet. We're looking at somewhere between 45 and 4,800 square feet for a new building. A little more efficient, a little better layout. Yeah. Um, right now, as you drive into our driveway, be on the left-hand side uh, of the um, of the property, and um, we thought we had a design actually. But now, as we look at uh, the type of requirements that are going to happen with this permit, with other um, other tasks and and responsibilities that we have in maintaining the system, it it may may change a little bit, but it's right in that that ballpark of, of square footage. So one it's going yeah, yeah. to be about the, same. about the same size. I guess my, my suggestion is to insulate it really, really well and even go over the standards. You know, I had one house and it was, you know, pick a number, $1,000 a month for all that stuff, and we did all that the next time and fixed it, and it's, you know, two-thirds less. Right. And so, and those those costs accrue to you year after year. Mm -hmm. So you you know spend a little more now and spend a lot less later is kind of yeah we're we're and we're we're planning on keeping part of the old building the right. the current garage as it's great cold storage right we don't need to yeah. um, so Bob um, just one more question I know there was conversations at some point about um, you know you know this board is interested in doing a new administration's building over at uh, two fairgrounds and I know there was a little conversation I hope taking place about the water company maybe joining in I know there was issues and thoughts on both sides of that but I just wanted to make sure that process at least we did we go through that process we worked with the town manager we looked at, at that and um, we we I think the building that we're going to be putting up will no way preclude if five years from now that someone felt there was a, a place on that property for another town building, it, it, it could happen. I, I don't think, um, you know, our the commission and our thing is we, we need to move. We need to get it done. I was down there Sunday night with a boiler that's 42 years old and Serviceman can't believe we still have a boiler that old, but we're nursing it. I've got one of those too, and it's not very yeah. much fun. <laughs> no. no, I just think it's you know just want to keep bringing it up because I think there is some significant long-term advantages for the uh, water company being over on two fairgrounds, and uh, just hope we're all working together to achieve that. Thank you, Thank Mr. Gardner. Thank. Did you want to type Sconset or Sconset? Where's that? My um, budget, Sconset, has gone down a couple hundred thousand bucks. It doesn't. Uh, if the article goes through, will this be the last year of a separate budget? Will yeah, all be depending on the legislature, uh, Mr. Chairman, but that is the um, intent. I think all the work that's been into it and the town council has done and, and um, gone back and forth, that I cannot imagine that anyone would have um, an issue with that. So. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Libby? Okay, we've got the monthly town management activities report. And as I try to usually do, I won't touch on every single item, but this is just meant to give you a bit of an overview about some of the items that we've been up to. We have some personnel issues ongoing, some grievance and disciplinary actions. We've had some various meetings, include the, including the ones that are listed there. A number of projects, at least one of which is coming before you on this agenda, the Tank Farm Relocation RFP. Island Home is um, moving along a bit. We are working on going to Sherburn Commons to discuss with them potential plans for the facility being at that location. At the same time, we are working on, I think I m mentioned this last week because we um, had a contract on the agenda, but 
We have worked with our architect to engage a professional firm to review alternate operational models for the facility, and we'll continue to have the architect finish a report on the issues with the current site and looking at the other options. We have an IT operational review that's almost complete, and we're going to be re reviewing it with the cabinet, and there may be some recommendations coming forward on that. The other building projects shown there. The four fairgrounds housing, we are scheduled to give you all an update on where we are with that on February 17th. And we're working on getting our committee manual updated and sent out very shortly. We have a lot of other items, 2016 annual town meeting preparation that um, obviously, I'm, I know you know, takes quite a bit of time. The business license discussions and the issues that we brought forward to you last week, um, 106 Surfside, the 40B, we're going to be needing to work on a comment letter at some point soon. Um, sewer project funding and public outreach is a lot of activity going on on that to get a newsletter ready to go a letter to property owners, an FAQ sheet, and various meetings set up with some of the community groups. Just just back to our island home, is there sort of a timeline on with the uh, consultants in terms of when their reports are due? Their report is due mid-March, okay. and actually I had expected to get a schedule today of interviews. You, I've got you all on a list to be interviewed, and. I'm thinking now that I didn't get that today, so I'll have to follow up on that tomorrow. That sounds timely. Thank you. Yep. I just wanted to also mention to, to the board, I'll try to remember to do this more often, but your, a couple of items that are coming up at your meeting next week, February 3rd, include an overview from Housing Nantucket of the School View 40B project that is not proceeding. Some of you have asked for an update on that, and Anne will come in and review it. The film policy, I think we're going to have back before you. Last week when you discussed it, we needed to make some clarifications to what it, who it exactly applies to. I think we're working on that and can bring it back next week. And you'll be happy to hear we have another HDC appeal. Well, well, now we will. So. It's nice to hear, Libby, what's coming. You know, it's uh, helpful. Uh, the agenda is not completely final, but those are the look like the main things right at the moment. And just uh, w one question, um, just on the community compact community follow up, is that just you know kind of signing some things and bringing that compact into full effect? We um, have signed the contract with the state for it yep. and for the funding that they're going to give us for our project, which is the updating of financial policies. And finance director is going to be getting out an RFP or a quote sheet to, a, to secure a firm to do that project with us. So that, that was what some of the follow-up was. Great. And um, Lauren Sinatra did mention recently she was looking into a grant opportunity of some kind, an energy-related grant, and one of the questions was, is your community a community, yeah. a, a compact community, which helps you in the rating of the grant? So that was one of our first benefits of it. Oh, it's, it's really good. You know, I was actually at the MMA conference. I was talking to the lieutenant governor and you know, saying you should come on over to sign it. You were talking to the lieutenant governor? Well, at the MMA meeting, you know, the weather was tough, but it was wow. still enjoyable. That's where you make friends and communicate with people. They're all there just for that purpose. Great. Thank you, Libby. Thank you. I think that's it for town manager report. All right. We're going to move on to uh, selectmen's reports and comments. The first item is the ratification of decision regarding the appeal of Joseph Friedman and Julia and Theodore Lyman of the Historic District Commission approval certificate number 64611 with regard to the property of 13 C Street. Don and I will be recusing from this, gentlemen. Yes, so don't, go too, so don't go too far. This will should be, not we'll take long. All right, so we're here to ratify the decision. It was in our packet after a couple changes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And are we happy with what was presented? I'm or, happy. I thought the changes uh, made the decision much clearer and understandable and um, I support them. Right. Yeah. And I'm, you know, okay. spent a lot of time with town council on this and I found it very helpful to you know, make sure it's written clearly and um, understandably for the general public to understand exactly what um, I felt, you know, personally in regards to the, uh, to the application. So. Great. 
All right. So we'll make a formal motion again to uh, um, appeal the decision of the Nantucket Historic District Commission relative to 13 C Street Is as uh, drafted by town council. Right. Yeah, to adopt the decision. I would uh, second that motion. All right. And then uh, and we aren't voting. We've already voted two to one, so I'm, I'm opposed because I, I think the uh, – but I do think that they did a good job writing the decision. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I, you know, I, I guess it's still two to one. Yeah. I'm going to uphold the HCC still, but I think it's important. And I, while I agree with some of the concerns that were addressed, I don't think they raised to a level uh, where they would be uh, defendable in court, although I think the, what we provided will help the neighbors if they – so choose to fight this. So I, I think it was sort of a, I think it was a good exercise, and I wish them luck if they determine to do that. Yeah, you know, and, and you know these are you know, things that are appealed to us, and it's you know sometimes we, right. you know, it's important that we we uh, we look at everyone mm -hmm. very seriously. Yeah, well, it's on, the HCC is a high bar. There's you know to to overturn them. They felt very strongly about this, and so I felt we'd be. You know, we'd be fighting amongst ourselves. So, okay. Yes. Yeah, come down, Steve, please. So, Stephen Cohen, I represent the property owner in this matter, and my client would like to be able to get a building permit, and I believe that it would be uh, uh, proper for the board to issue a decision. I think normally when you have a motion that f that fails for failure to reach a majority, which is, I think, what we have here, that that's stated in the decision and, and should be so that uh, my client won't have problems getting a building permit. Yep, thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're sure. all done. All right, come back, Bobby. We're all set. Uh, next item is discussion regarding bike routes in and out of town, continued from January 13th, 2016. wants to start <clears throat> I'll, I'll start Bobby um, you know I, I requested to have this um, you know just to just to kind of summarize um, you know I kind of had this idea of um, getting people a little safer in and out of town um, went to uh, came to the board because there kind of seemed to be this um, flow in in priorities into whether uh, you know the traffic safety and other groups could approve something if there was um, you know parking is a is an issue that the board oversees so kind of brought this to the board first and the board said well we need to get some more clarification on some of these issues um, so this went back to traffic safety um, and to um, BPAC um, and roads of right of one right of way committee um, they reviewed it it's now back at us after that time I think it's been um, modified in different ways from what um, was originally proposed, and I think those changes are really good. Um, and I think it's important that we move forward on it. Um, so I'm, I'm willing to make a motion to um, adopt this plan as laid out in by the uh, traffic safety work group. Before, before we vote on that, uh, one question, have you, there was, what was it, $55,000 for the one section of it. How do you propose to fund that? That was one question. Libby, I don't have a funding source for that unless you are going to re-examine free cash. So I think that's something we could e examine. Okay. Has the free cash already been certified and uh, allocated all for this town meeting? Well, the we reviewed with you what the proposed uses would be, and there is. I mean, we'd ha we'd have to do some reallocating. You'd have to not do something or take something away from something else. Or we find it as a, a fifty-five thousand in the uh, in some other budget. I mean, there there are a number of sort of repairs and maintenance and fix-up budgets around town. But the but anyway. That's yep, we we could we could figure that out as well and not do some scheduled item and, and instead do this. We could also ask the reserve fund. We could ask the reserve fund. Too. Okay, so it's if you so yeah. desire. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that, that one might be a possibility. You could put that in the motion, for example. Sure. Mm -hmm. not may, sure. They may or may not approve that. Who knows? Yeah, I, I would just say I'm not sure the reserve fund would be 
over this space. It, it would be up to the finance committee, obviously, and I'm not sure they would consider it unforeseen or unexpected. Sorry, I, just to be clear on the motion, you said adopt the plan as recommended by traffic safety. Would that be this from April 16th? Yes. Okay, and th so that would take parking away and... Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think just, just to be clear to, to Tobias, my sense is you, you'd like the board to approve the plan and implicit in that and maybe be direct about it as the elimination of X number of parking places as recommended by the traffic safety in their comments on the plan. Yes. Right? Specifically. Okay. Just so we understand that. And, and just as far as funding goes, you know, I, I have been in talks with Remain and they... they are interested in this project and, and might be willing to help fund a portion of it through a grant process. There is some other funding besides the town, but the town needs to show a little leadership on this. And it is a small amount of money, so if the board's willing, I think we'll be able to find it. Well, I, I will say I've been interested in making sure that we have a sort of a, a, a route that's... Um, the accepted primary route to get to the what I think of as the sort of center of town. We have a way to get out through Orange Street. We have a way to get out Cliff Road. And I think in the middle of the island, uh, an, a, another route is something we need to have. So to me, since there's been no other route recommended specifically and has gone through this exercise, I think it's worth trying this. So that's where I am. No, and I and I'm I plan to support it as well. I wanted to make sure we oh, could we fund have a it. Motion, nobody's seconded I'll yet. I'll second so. the motion. Okay. Yeah. Motion's been made and second. Now you can discuss yeah. the motion. Okay. So those are my feelings. Um, I think you know, in terms of parking places, if if you know, a year or two down the road, it turns out to be extremis, you can always backtrack. It's not impossible to do that, but. Uh, I think it's time to get on with finding a route, and right. this is the one before us. So, what's interesting is we we got two or three letters in favor, of not well, one in favor of this route, but a couple in favor of uh, improving biking in general. And one lady was saying that the spaces on High Street only came in the last you know ten years or so. Anyway, anyway, yeah. which I thought was interesting. Now maybe we were parking there illegally. Anyhow, who knows? Yeah. But it's you know. So some of the spaces we're taking have not been in existence that long, according to a letter. I can't prove that. So. Well, High Street's interesting now. When, you, when you're traveling towards um, Maine on Prospect and Turn Right, and there are people parked there, yeah. it's a two-way street, and it already has to stop mm -hmm. becoming a well, two-way street. Yeah, there it you is. Know. It's amazing. Yeah, it just doesn't work anyway. So. Yeah. Don, so any comments? So would the existing... The existing bike route that's in place would be a, sort of abandoned oh, I think as far as the preferred route, just to be clear, because there is one already. Yeah, there's, there's signage on the phone, on the poles. Yeah. Right, so we'll, we'll be, we all would be switched to this instead? Well, I think there's I more, there's more than, I think there's more than one done. bike route on those poles. There's, there's five or six, there's different colors going to different areas. Yeah. But I mean, th from this side of town. Yeah. This is in lieu of. You want to answer that, Toby? Oh, you know, I, I don't, you know, I, I think um, at our workshop we heard from Mr. Burns that, you know, this would be in addition to, you know, it's important to give people options. Um, you know, we talked about um, marking Orange Street, uh, having a, a lane on Orange Street, you know, as a way of getting out of town. Um, it's not perfect, you know, and where it ends you at, but it's, you know, um, it, it's, it's better than going down Union Street the wrong way, so it's important to have some um, guidance. And, you know, f you know, frankly, if, if this is the preferred and we have another, I think it's just important, you know, we can bar mark both. Um, you know, I know Mike probably has the best assessment of which is the best way to go, and, you know, we can move forward accordingly as far as staff sees fit. You know, it's, it's currently not marked, so you know, it's neither here nor there, but I, I think it would be nice to have both of them marked, although I think the, the current path leading down, um, you know, Pleasant Street in Atlantic is... It just create it's a little more conflict, a little more dangerous than um, I think is appropriate. So you're so you, we may take a second look at that if in fact this is implemented. Yeah. If traffic safety or someone takes a second look. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'd, I'd leave that into their expertise and discretion. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I'm, I'm going to make my comments. They're going to fall in deaf ears, but I'm going to make them anyway. I'm not in favor of this route at all because of two factors. One is that it takes away valuable parking spaces from an area that already has very limited parking space. Um, if we're going to if we're going to do this, I think at the very minimum we should open up the uh, the um, Dave Street parking lot to overnight parking for anyone with an in-town sticker because you're taking away seven parking spaces here. I know the chief's not going to like to hear that, and the neighborhood's not, but you got to give them somewhere to park. Two is this this path. I no matter how many much you stencil it, I think it'll be very li limited use to it. You've got this path going from the top of Main Street to Pine Street to get out of town. You can barely drive a car up those cobblestones, never mind a bicycle. And I don't think that you're going to get a lot of people who are going to ride past Orange Street without turning and going up Orange Street. So, now I'd love to be proven wrong, but I can't vote for this in this. I don't think we should be designing any bike paths to go up cobblestone streets. Uh, they're, they're, I get, I see people go down on bikes all the time on the cobblestones down in south on the bottom of Main Street between Steamboat uh, Straight Wharf and Main Street, and there's no cars anywhere near them. They just that old adage of it's like riding a bike. Well, yeah, but not when you're riding across cobblestones. So I, I'm very leery about trying to route people out of town to the mid part of the island up a substantial amount of cobblestones. Um, I think, you know, that's more, that's, that's more my concern, quite frankly, than the parking. Although I, you know, I really, I feel for these people who live in these neighborhoods with no off-street parking. And now they've, they've just lost seven spaces in it. Well, it's, it's, you make it sound like it's not much, but to the people who live in that neighborhood, seven spaces is a lot. When there's only 14 probably within a three-block radius of them. So um, I'm not going to be able to support this the way it is right now. I appreciate that, Bobby. And just you know, one thought is you know I'm hopeful that you know I think your concerns about um, you know getting all the way up to Pine Street and there's a large amount of cobblestones. I think this would I would be hopeful that this is part of a culture change and the fact that our t core downtown is very small and if you you know um, you can you can just walk up that little section. It's not far, and bam, you're out. So I think it it helps deal with our um, troubles of people riding on sidewalks and I'd, I'd hope that it would make a culture change just so that people can come into town leave their bikes right there at, uh, at Fair Street and then walk around town instead of having bike racks all over town so just a small step forward we'll see where it goes um, Don? Well I, I said it last time I'm just I am concerned with saying that any particular way when there are multiple paths into town which now there will be two potential routes stenciled from this side of town promoting that it's truly safe when it's not a separated bicycle path and i'm i just i think that there are multiple choices and biking should be promoted and safety measures should be promoted but telling people that we specifically think that this is a safer way when it's a street you're sharing with cars i just don't don't think is a good idea and, and Don, I, I totally hear that. I, I just find it, uh, you know, uh, challenging to, uh, you know, if, if we wanted to go for the route where we were to, you know, entirely remove, um, you know, more parking or close down streets to enable that really safe mode to take place, I'd be supportive of that. But I don't think we're there yet as a board and as a community. And this is a step towards maybe getting, um, getting to a solution that you're more interested in. The, I think before and we're going to vote this, but after we vote this, I think we should talk about signage here and on, in Orange Street, et cetera. It's in the, you know, they they gave pictures of these signs that go on the road, and I have some concerns about that. Uh, what I will say, it's interesting. The letter again, the letter that, yeah, and I, which we have some concerns, but I, we don't want to muddy that right now. I think that the, one of the lady, the lady that talked about High Street, was complaining that she can't walk safely to the church or to town through that area because the cars are parked on all the sidewalks. So we're not giving up sidewalks. We're, get, we're not giving up parking spaces. We're getting back sidewalks. You know, so there's, there's other ways to look at this. And, and I think, you know, if we want to have alternatives, we need to make sure that their, their alternatives are safe. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, Toby, when he did the, his stuff here, he had pictures and you had people walking in the streets because they had no choice. So I think, you know, I think this is 
it, well, I don't think it's going to solve everything. I think it's worth trying, and the numbers are not that expensive to try it. So. Sure. All right, well, I guess we debate this enough. Let's put it to a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Opposed? Two opposed, three in favor. All right, you guys can start figuring out where you're going to find the money from. All right, now the other comment, because this, this, will, this will have to do, and maybe it isn't uh, noticed properly, so we'll have to do it another night, but I do have sort of an issue with uh, this as signage and this size. I think, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's rather large, and I can see, you know, what Linda was talking about uh, when she was here last week or the week before. Uh, I also, on some streets, I think we should be considering, and this is kind of from Mike, I think we should actually be lining out the lane. I mean, we could have small bike signs at the beginning and have the lane and delineate where the parking is and where the lane is. There is a recommendation. Uh, Tobias's motion was to adopt the recommendation from traffic safety. In this recommendation, it says there will be 11 of these stencils on this route. Exactly, and that's why I'm bringing up that part of the recommendation. And, and well, I think that I think we should have brought that up before we voted on it. But well, I guess I don't, we, can, I mean, we can undo our vote if we want. I'm, all I'm saying is I think that part should be looked at. So if I want, I'd like to just ask for a specific agenda item to review the. I'd like the to scope uh, of the. I, I would like to amend I, the recommendation I, to no, to review the Matt. And sign. Okay, Matt, uh, Mike. I think what we, we need from you is now that they've adopted this route, can you bring us back a map showing us where the eleven stencils will actually be located? Does it show it on here? Is that what these little white arrows are? It's hard to see. So these little white triangles yeah, they're, they're are where, there. the, where the stencils are going. Do you want to come up and point them out? Because I can barely see them. I have, there's, there's, yeah, they're the white. There's one, eight, one, two, three, four. Five, there's one up near number six, 10. And there's one number on part seven. Oh, and there's one down lower. Over here. Yeah, there's someone there. prospect. Over here. Down below. Sorry. Down here. Is there, are those them? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten eleven. eleven. Yeah. See, I, that, this, this, this is my problem with this yeah. route. Is you got one on Pine Street. There's nothing to tell people to go up Main Street. They're all going to ride up. Or they're going to hit Orange Street and go, I'm not riding on these damn cobblestones anymore, and go right up Orange Street. Nobody's going to find it. They'll find it coming into town. It'll be a nice new in-town lane, yeah. which we already have now, which is much shorter to cut across from uh, Pleasant. It will get you from Prospect Street, I guess. Yeah. And, and, and Bobby, you're right. It's not, it's not perfect, but it's a step forward. It's far from and I think Mike has heard our concerns yeah. about the size of the stencil, and I. Yeah, that's know, my, the, what is my, the? Um, I got a jigsaw and a piece of plywood. How big is that stencil, up. Mike? Four feet, five feet. Yeah. And is it well? So is it possible to make one that's two foot? Yeah. Can we can we or scale that like, appropriately? I'll, I can talk to some of my uh, you know graffiti artist friends. Yeah. Perhaps. Well, I don't. You know, I don't want to make this. Mr. Chairman, if I could, there were some time, many years ago we did try a smaller stencil because that was the concern was that the stencils that are used and it's a standard in most communities is, would be too big and too shocking for the community. If, thank you. Um, so a smaller stencil was tried, but a smaller stencil is really hard to see and it, basically it's, it's unnoticeable. The reason why this is larger and it's apparent because you want it to be noticeable. Uh, and if if you really want something in the field to go look at, we've all driven out Pleasant Street in front of the new stop and shop. That's what it looks like. Right. Um, and I, I mean that's that's the size and that's kind of the accepted treatment. So, Don, I have to say I really think it's highly inappropriate to put those big stencils in on the oldest streets in the downtown. Yeah, as as do I, and so I'd like them smaller. But we'll see what happens. And I'm not, I'm not going to not do this because of the stencils, but I'm, I'm, I would like the stencils to be uh, in keeping to a historic town. I think it's a reasonable request, and we ought to do it that way. Well, I'm making that as an yeah. I'll make that as a friendly amendment if that's you know, if that's acceptable to the other two. Great. What? Okay. I think Mike's heard what. Okay. Had to say. I don't know. That's me. 
Well, but you got to make we sure. Can, if you want it voted, you got to vote it that way, and that's why I'm asking to amend. So, what was the, the vote amendment to make so, these appropriate for the? You know, well, what is appropriate? Small. I mean, I think you need to tell them what you want. No. Uh, don't don't just throw it out. You got to say, do you want them two foot around? Do you want them three foot around? Or do you want to make a decision right now? So, we don't want to be going. I don't want to hear that we put him in. Right. What he did appropriate wasn't I, what you guys I, well, want. I, I'd be happy to have the motion say that we delegate it so that a member of this board work with Mr. Burns to decide on the size of the stencils. And we nominate Mr. Fee to work with him. Excellent. Well, Mr. Fee isn't available to work with. Yeah. Right, well, I mean, then, that, that, well, I mean, I, then, I'm then concerned. That takes you back to Bobby's point. I understand, and that's the, that's the issue. So right. let's pick a number right now. Do you want him two foot around? That's about that big. You want them three foot around? Maybe the HTC should review it. That's what I was thinking. Is is that's the, their purview? Yeah. I just I, HCC I think doesn't. Just fix I, I, I'm not willing to have the HCC start reviewing street they markings review and signage. signs. Once we open that Pandora's box, no, no so, street signs, road there. signs, traffic signs are exempt so, from the HTC, no. and they should mean stay that way. Because once we let them in the door, <laughs> Linda will be in here every week saying, you can't put that parking sign up or this stop sign up or that <laughs> yield sign because it wasn't approved by me. I'm not going down that road. Crosswalks will be next. Um, all right, well, let's pick two feet then and go from there. Mr. Burns, two feet. Well, Great. The, well. Why don't we just try to pick something that's roughly half the size of that maybe? There you because go. it might not come in two feet. Aren't those about four feet? Why don't you come back to us with tell us what you can get? All right, there you smaller go. than that, okay? And we'll go from there. Thank you. All right, next item: um, approval of the purchase and sale agreement for the right of first in the right of first refusal for an agreement between Harbor Fuel Corporation and a portion for a portion of eleven industrial industrial road industry road. Excuse me. And I just want to make one comment that. Um, this has been going on for 25 years, and some of us here, well, I guess just you and I, Rick, served with Whitey. This was, this was one of Whitey's, I want, I don't want to say dying wishes, Project. but he really pushed for this, and I'm hoping he's looking down on us right now going, it's about time. So I suspect he probably is, Bobby. Um, Libby? I, I just was going to say something sort of similar to that. This is kind of the culmination of years of study we issued an RFP to cut to a long story short last fall regarding this property at 11 industry road and we were seeking you know a bulk fuel storage firm to bid on it which one of them did harbor fuel we have a purchase and sale agreement before you and a right of first refusal agreement and um there is a deed restriction that will require the continued use as a bulk fuel storage or similar and related uses and related and related uses for a period of time and um, I think we've reviewed it with you before we have a summary that we could make available to the public I, I would w mm -hmm. want to also thank Dave Fredericks he was very helpful in our negotiations and probably wouldn't really have gotten this far without Dave actually I agree, and I think we should thank Bobby for putting up with all of us going back and forth to him. <laughs> Sorry, right, near the know, end. It was, uh, <laughs> I think this is a good deal for the town. This is a, a good deal for our for our residents that rely on gasoline and and um, heating oil. I know Tobias has some concerns about it. And I completely understand them. And I know Rick has some concerns, and I completely understand them. But um, we did vote on this in executive session and we're basically we're ratifying the vote so yeah, Bobby, any comments anybody to, wants to make feel free we don't have to dwell on it I, I think I've all I've expressed this at uh, town meeting I felt that the property should be leased not sold and that's all so. and, 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 and Tobias very, what very doesn't briefly. like our dependence on fossil fuel which I understand so yeah and that being said though Bobby I, I you know do commend you for you know doing the due diligence and putting together you know a, a good agreement as far as you know past agreements in the town may not have been as clear-cut I think this is a little more helpful um, just me personally I think uh, I, I don't like the fact that in my mind we're subsidizing an oil company um, that provides a valuable service heating people's homes I just think we should be 
um, using that subsidy in a way to promote um, forms of energy um, heating that don't require fossil fuels and, and uh, keep the planet a little cooler in the long run. And I will note that in the agreement it does say energy related businesses because we expect that down the road we won't be relying on fossil fuels anymore. So, um, can someone make the motion to approve? Or I want to approve. Yeah. So I'll second, second it. By Matt, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. So, three Aye. to two. Thank you, everyone. Um, thank you, Dave. Libby. And I know Bruce would be excited to, uh, to... This was the whole reason that I ran for a second term, was to get this done. So I feel like I finally accomplished something up here after five years. Oh, good. I was excited about the... You're not, you're not allowed to resign. <laughs> I'm not resigning. <laughs> I'm not resigning. <laughs> I'm not resigning. <laughs> say at the end of my term that I felt like I got something done. So. Um, committee reports. They, uh, Rick? Uh, Board of Health. Um, we uh, had a brief meeting, but we did. We were visited by a number of landscapers. Uh, primarily responding to the discussion we had about enforcement at our meeting the prior week. Um, and I think the one hopefully positive thing out of that was to ask uh, the health director to work and establish some kind of a working relationship or a committee, I'm not sure you want to use the word committee, but uh, with a number of landscapers. And I think they're all interested in the same thing we are. So it was, in that sense, it was a session I think uh, it was nice to have them turn up and be concerned so that's great to hear Rick and just to follow up so Rick the idea is you kind of develop a, a more of a rapport with the landscape community to identify um, infractions is that kind of the idea well right but I think I think it's broader than that. I think they just want to feel a part of the solution mm -hmm. to our fertilizer issue and I think we um, we saw the Board of Health encourage that and I think that's a good thing for all of us. Um, you know. So there you go. Great. Anybody else? Um, I will make a, I did want to bring this up during Selectman's comments. We all did receive a letter from the chairman of the FinCom re, um, requesting that we put a special town meeting in the annual town meeting and put the Madiket Somerset parcels back on. Um, and I just wanted to get everyone's take on that because if we're going to do something along that lines we need to do it soon sooner than later we it will require us printing an additional warrant and having an additional special election we're not quite sure if we can do an election in an election like we could do a town meeting in a town meeting well it would most certainly be complicated yes at the very least uh, my personal belief is that um, I I think that given the complexity of this issue and the numerous, numerous questions that I've gotten in the last week about this whole process with the betterments and how, where's the pipe going to run and everything of that nature that I don't think we could successfully do both of these at this town meeting. Um, that being said, um, I feel more than comfortable about having a special town me in the fall I think we're going to have to have one anyway for other things um, and I would urge the FinCom to look at the first article because whatever we set for percentage of abatements and payments by the taxpayer and by the individuals will carry forward onto the next one so you know we look we look forward to any comments or that you have for that in that regard whether you want to make it in your motion I guess that's where it would go at this point because we've adopted what we have. So, um, you know, there's going to be a lot of public education that we need to do for people to understand this. Um, so I would be very, I'm not really comfortable at this time, time trying to do two at once. I would rather do this one in the spring and see how it goes. And if it goes well, then go to the fall with the next one. I think it would be great to start the outreach on both projects now and plan for a fall town meeting. I think that's going to happen. I think a lot of the questions that come up with the second one will come up in the first one. I don't know if we can necessarily do the detail of outreach for the for the second article because the individual people that are in that district are going to want to know how they're affected individually. And until we adopt a rate and um, and figure out those kind of things, we can't really give them direct answers. So. Um, 
I have, yeah. I have a question, I guess, uh, for maybe you know or, or maybe Jim can help us. Is the, uh, is the f finance committee uh, solid on how they want to allocate? You know, they're asking us to bring this forward. Are they solid on how they would like to allocate the split on this? Um, so, uh, uh, Jim Kelly, again, um, we were really just reviewing it from a financial standpoint. Uh, we have to do this project. <clears throat> It'll never be less expensive than it is today because there's a 4.5% uh, project cost escalator. And if we don't do the projects all together, we'll have to reapply for the favorable 0% financing at a, at a later time, and they'll be ranked or with the other applicants. So that we're, we're just really commenting on the, on the financial uh, impact. We didn't get into the needs, if you will, uh, we understand that it's up to the Board of Selectmen, not through the article to assign the split. Libby, is that what we're... You can make a... You can, you can change the split in your, okay. in your so that motion. So part of our motion. Right. So, and we, and we so we're going to be discussing all of this tomorrow. I'll be taking your comments that you made today, yeah. and that I'm sure we'll be discussing the split tomorrow. Yeah, and whatever the split is for this first one, the split will be the same for the second one. So that was a question we had. Yeah. We can, uh, we're not going to have two different to, abatement that's good rates. To know, so. I think we uh, we're, we were informed a lot by the sewer work group in terms of how they came up with the split of the 50-50, um, and we'll have more conversations about that tomorrow. Okay, Thank because you. I would feel more, I would feel if I thought this board was, you know, uh, was near unanimous and the FinCom was near unanimous on the details of it, then I might feel more strongly about going at this town meeting. But I have serious concerns if we don't answer all the questions well that politically we won't be able to, well, that both could go down. So I think that's, you know, we're looking at it, I'm looking at it partly from a, I, I know we need to do it and I know it's going to be more expensive. Hopefully the zero percent will still be around if we act quickly enough in the fall. But unless we're all on the same page and standing at town meeting, uh, you know, in agreement, uh, then I think we'd have we'd have the danger of losing both. So I think you're, where you are politically, Bobby, is not a not a bad spot right now. And just to you know, kind of second what you said, Bobby, I had some you know reservations, you know, just similar to how, how you felt in regards to Medicaid and two projects at once. And I kind of commend your leadership um, for saying, you know, let's. You know, slow down. We can do one, and I think we can do one. And if we do it really well, we can do the second one. And it, it might cost us a little more money, but it might actually save some money. There might be um, newer technologies, other thoughts that come out to play as well. So, um, and there's also a lot of other costs in the future for other projects that the the town's going to have to think about. And, and we can't pay for everything, so it's important to take our time and do things right. All right. Um, any other comments, committee? Bobby, no, I think I was there last week. I haven't changed my feelings about okay. it. And what you said, I think, was on target. So. so that's where we're at, Jim. Just so you can go back to your committee and explain that we, you know, we're if things go favorably with this article. I'm pretty confident that we'll have a special in the fall. Right behind it. Right yeah. behind it. So. And you guys are four o'clock tomorrow. Uh, uh, yes. Okay. Thanks. We. Um, the only other uh, committee report I have, it's not really a committee report, I just want to let everybody know that I, I sat in on my first uh, school building committee meeting, mm. and um, one of the things that I wanted to try to really do when they were happy to hear was that I said, you know what, I really want to have a good line of communication between our board and the building committee and the school committee board so that when people ask questions, um, we're all informed. And, you know, we talked about things like, building moves and road closings and make sure that they don't coincide and they were they were the contractor was not aware of some of the things so <laughs> I pointed them towards Erica and yeah, yeah and we've added them to our distribution list so now anytime there's a street blocking or a, over the road or anything like that they'll be notified and we walked the property where we saw where the fence was going to go although we didn't walk it entirely I guess because some of the fence may have to be moved but it's uh, and you know it's 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 Big a pretty project. monumental task. I will I will say that I was very impressed with their security measures. Um, everyone who is going to be on that site is a, gets a Corey background check. Every worker has a 
sticker on their helmet. Everyone is instructed not to discuss or talk to anyone outside the fence. So I wanted to make an appeal to all of our parents that this isn't a backyard construction site. When you drop your kids off, you can't go wandering and check things out because you're not going to be allowed. But um, every, every worker there has a number on their helmet, and if they have anyone has any issues with any worker, they'll just take the number down and they'll be, they'll be uh, dealt with it right away. So That's yeah, the end of any problems right there, this, Bobby. This company, this is all they do is build schools, and they, they seem to really know what they're doing. So, and they're using a lot of local contractors as well. Tuscana is doing all the concrete and excavation and demolition. So it uh, hopefully will go smoothly. Um, hopefully they didn't do the... What was it, Falmouth High School, Libby? <laughs> anyway. What, what, what there were, were little towns, things like... The towns on the Cape had all kinds of problems. So it's nice was, to have yeah. someone experience. Right. Probably. It was, um, you know, little things like where the fence was going to go across the back of the school and completely close off the entrance to the cafeteria, which we used during town meeting. We explained that we needed that. And plus, uh, the school needs it for their athletic teams, so they were able to move the fence and... So accommodate that. The chief was there. He walked. He went through the whole property to make sure he could get ambulances and fire trucks and all that stuff in there. And there, they have a lock key system that the chief will have a key to that he can get in at any time. So it seemed like it was well well orchestrated. Um, the only other thing I wanted to say was um, I got numerous comments this week after Saturday's storm. What a great job the town did removing the snow and being prepared ahead of time with the pre-treat of the roads and I just wanted to give an attaboy to to the DPW and your staff they did they really did do a great job considering the amount of heavy wet snow that we had the roads on Sunday were in the best shape I've ever seen them after a snowstorm yeah so. I would say I, I had the same phone calls I think it was great I came back from Boston and I was like you know, expecting one thing, I was like, "Wow, we're, yeah, we're no. up there with Boston." That, that, nice. that snow fencing on Milestone seemed to really. I think be we finally got it in the right place. So, hopefully, that's our last snowstorm for the winter. But <laughs> I just watched the weather today, and they said that February looks to be cold and snowy. So, make your vacation plans now. <laughs> All right, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And I will not be.